That's definitely something to celebrate. And they just had their one year anniversary as a church that started right here in the room right behind the wall that we uh, have on our platform. So excited about the growth of the church from Armenia. This city is really a melting pot, it seems, of people from all around the world. And to see groups like this form, and that one right out of a small group that started here in our church. So if you haven't yet plugged into a small group, next week we're going to have many opportunities available to you. You might want to take advantage of that in the fall season that's coming up. And it really ties into our theme for today, the theme of grow. I wanted to mention that uh, Drew and Angelique Reed, who've been leading worship, they had a baby, and the baby was born on Monday, I believe, this week. She started into labor, we heard, on Sunday morning, but it was like a two-day journey. And finally, on Monday night, that, uh, that baby boy came into the world healthy, and everybody's great. And so we celebrate that. Congratulations to them. And a new grandma and grandpa, Doug, doesn't look old enough, but he is now joined the ranks of the grandparents of the world. It's a good group to be a part of. Last week, we talked about the first step in our vision, the word gather, how important it is that we come together and gather in this house to worship And so much so as we see the day approaching, the end of days, it's important for us to get together and worship God and learn of him. The second step in the process is to grow. I'm grateful that growth is a lifetime journey. It never ends. I was born into the church in a way, like my parents were pastors. I was blessed to be born into an environment where I never really had to wonder or figure out what the church was all about. I started coming when I was a baby. My parents brought me. Now we see uh, our kids bringing their babies. And as soon as they can, they put them in the nursery because good parents understand they need a break from those children. So we use that in every way that we can, and that's a blessing. But to be born into this environment was a gift, actually, I felt like that came to me from God and to be in that journey for a lifetime later this month just 10 days from now I'll celebrate my 59th birthday that sounds good on one level and on another level it sounds very frightening like I'm one year away from a number I never thought I would reach how in the world do you get to be 60 and I know there's some that have already reached that point and say ah it's no big deal you're just a kid I'll I'll take that And I feel like that in many ways, but just a really freaky thing to think that I'm at that stage of life. But here's what I still celebrate in the journey of life that I'm on, is that even at this stage and this many years down the road, I'm excited about learning. I get to grow, and growth is a never-ending process from the time we're born until the last day of our life, we have the chance to learn something. We have the chance to grow, and we're in it for that growth process all the way through life. This is a very important part of our vision today, that God's truth is something that we never fully grasp. It's something that we have an opportunity to grow in. And what I know, I'm grateful for. And what I have yet to know, I'm grateful that I'm going to know it. I want to keep growing. 2 Peter chapter 1 is a passage It gives us a great foundation for this process called growth. Peter was a very interesting person as we study his life as a disciple and a follower of Jesus. He's a guy that knew about growth because he had great needs to grow. He was a guy that was seen as really quite volatile. Like he'd be up one day and and down the next He wasn't the most stable guy. And yet in the process of his journey, he grew. And as he grew, he passed on that knowledge to other people. And so we get it today from a guy that wasn't known for his stability in the early days of his journey. 2 Peter chapter 1 and beginning at verse 3. His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness 
through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. That verse by itself is a message. His divine power, think about that, God's divine power. He's almighty and he has all power. His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness. So that's available to us. The challenge is accessing that knowledge, accessing his power, accessing his presence. Because at times it feels like, really? Uh, it sounds good, but I feel like I'm kind of on my own. Well, this is part of our growth is to figure out how we can get in tune with who he is and access his spirit and his divine nature that he says is available to every one of us. Through these, he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in the divine nature and escape the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. We can actually receive his divine nature and in that we can avoid a lot of the mess that's in the world. A lot of the evil desires that come naturally to us, we can overcome as we gain access to the divine nature of God. For this very reason, make every effort. There's a very important word in the growth process is that we have to try. Growth isn't something that just happens to us. We got to go after it. For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness and to goodness, knowledge, and to knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, again, there's a word that talks about the process of growth. In increasing measure, we're continuing to add and increase in the principles of, of godliness, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But if anyone does not have them, he is nearsighted and blind and has forgotten that he's been cleansed from his past sins. One of the motivating factors is, I'm free from my past. How beautiful is that, that I can now attain to something much higher and much better than where I've come from. Therefore, my brothers, be all the more eager to make your calling and election sure for if you do these things, you will never fall and you will receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He gives us the power to overcome, not to fall, but to be ushered into his eternal presence forever. What a beautiful reality. We can't live the Christian life without God's presence and the presence of the Holy Spirit. This is a beautiful reality is that the Holy Spirit is with us. We sang the song about his Holy Spirit to welcome his Holy Spirit into our lives. We welcome you in this place. is isn't about this room. It's about this room right here, my heart. I welcome you, Holy Spirit, into me. And I have access to God's presence by the person of the Holy Spirit. So there's seven virtues that he calls us to strive after. Add to your faith goodness. What is goodness? Simply moral excellence. Add to your faith goodness. The beginning place in the journey spiritually is faith itself. We come into relationship with God through faith. And in his grace, he gives us the gift of eternal life. Now that we have faith, we start adding stuff to it. Add to that step into relationship with God, his goodness and moral excellence. If you want to be a fruitful Christian, then you and I need to grow in our character, in our moral excellence. We need to grow in the goodness that God intends for us to exhibit. Many of you exhibited goodness recently when we gave backpacks to Einstein Middle School. That's a, that's a gesture that says, we've got faith, now I'm going to add goodness to it and moral excellence, and I'm going to give love to people who need it. I learned that we gave over 200 backpacks with school supplies to the students at Einstein Middle School. And what a great blessing. Congratulations for that. That actually is a step of saying, my faith matters. I'm going to add to my faith goodness. 
I'm going to walk in moral excellence. I love that, that we have that in us that we can share with other people. The second thing to add is knowledge, practical wisdom. Add to your faith goodness, add to goodness knowledge. To be a fruitful Christian, we need to grow in wisdom. We need to grow in what we know about who God is. We need to add knowledge to our journey. That comes from God's word. The knowledge we have is written in this book. The psalmist David said it this way, your word is a light to my feet and a lamp to my pathway. I need that. I can't always see where I'm supposed to go. There's a lot of obstacles in the way and there's a lot of darkness around. Just a couple of weeks ago on a Sunday morning, I got up early, it was still dark and I went to a room in my house to iron a shirt that I was gonna take with me up here to the office. And so I got that shirt ironed and then I turned the light out in that room and turned the corner into the hallway and I could see enough on my way to that room with the dim light coming through the windows. But when I turned the bright light off, all of a sudden, you know, it affects your, your ability to see things and everything was so dark that I turned the corner from that room and I didn't see a door that was partially open in the hallway and I hit it with my toes and it hurt so bad. I mean, I was just walking and then wham, oh, I, you know, I, I tried not to say words that one shouldn't say. <laughs> but there's weird thoughts that come to your mind in moments like that. It hurts so bad. You know what that's like when you stub your toes? It was my little toe and the one right next to it. And I thought, oh, I hope I didn't break them. I got to go stand in front of people. I hope I can get my shoe on. And it fortunately wasn't too bad. It just turned colors. And I could still wear my shoes that day. But I thought, man, having a light for your feet and a lamp for your path means something. Like, I get that now. I should have turned the light on in the hallway. Why didn't I do that? That was just dumb. And when I think about what we're doing in our faith to grow, we need to go for it. You know, it's just not smart not to turn the light on. That's foolish to say, ah, I'm okay. No, I'm not okay. I need to get better. I'm going to turn the light on and let God's truth enlighten my, my pathway. In just a couple of weeks, we have the first Wednesday of of October coming, and the guest was mentioned in our highlights today, Joshua Metcalf. I've been learning more about him since coming to be aware of who he is. He has a whole program called Train to Be Clutch. He came through the Dream Center in LA, a ministry that we're very much in partnership with, and he's just a very unique thinker and really active in the athletics world. There are now universities that are bringing him in to speak to their athletes in their programs at high levels because he has learned principles as to how to help athletes perform at their highest. And it's all biblical truth that he's giving them. It's really quite remarkable. Now we have him coming to help us. On his website, one of the things I found was a reading list. He started reading like every day trying to learn is part of what he emphasizes for the students and the athletes that he trains now and business leaders that he gives insights to is to be ever a learner and add knowledge and the more you read you get information in your mind that's going to make a difference in how you live and the difference in how you relate to people and how you view the world and how you understand god add knowledge because it matters and it inspired me I'm really excited about having him come to hear him in person because he's already inspired me simply by his writings. Now I get to add to that even more knowledge of what he's going to be sharing with me and it's practical wisdom that we add into our tool chest of how we can grow in adding this to our faith. Add to that self-control. Controlling our passions instead of our passions controlling us. How important is that? Self-control. Sometimes saying principles that are really good principles sound alarming. Not alarming is probably the wrong word, but sound difficult. Like saying self-control can sound like, come on, get your act together. Actually, that's not the intent of it. 
having self-control is just a good thing. What's the opposite of that? Not being in control of myself. Don't I want to be in control of myself? I do. I don't want to be out of control. When you hear of someone being out of control, that's never a good thing. Bad things happen when you're out of control. Self-control is a wonderful blessing, and I want to have that, not letting my passions rule me. The scriptures say it this way also. Walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. The flesh, it reaps corruption in our life, while the spirit reaps eternal life in all the good things of God. So I want to have self-control by asking for his presence to help me in my journey. Yesterday in college football, I, I love this time of year because, I don't know, there's something about sports. I love all kinds of sports, but football is one of the top ones for me. I love to be out there Friday night. Saturday, I watched Nebraska win. That was fun for me. And then at the end of the day, I watched some highlights of other games and there were two different games and two different athletes that made the same blunder. They were running in the clear for the goal line and these athletes sometimes wanna celebrate when they get in the end zone and two different athletes just before they got into the end zone let go of the ball. When you get in the end zone, you've scored and now you can do that and celebrate but in their excitement to celebrate, let go of the ball at the one yard line and didn't score. Instead, it's a fumble, and the ball is dead, it, and the other team can actually recover it if they know what's going on. Two different guys did the same thing. And I thought, come on, have some self-control. You got to have a little self-control to get all the way to the end zone. Don't celebrate before it's time. Don't lose your mind at that moment when, man, you're just about to have a great victory and accomplish a great thing have some self-control so thank god for football it teaches us life lessons and gave me something to talk about today add to that perseverance pressing on when you feel like giving up there are times that life is heavy we have some battles challenges that we face and we can get heavy in our own soul and spirit and it can feel like man i'm getting tired i kind of like to quit but when we walk in our faith life with god he gives us his divine nature he's not a quitter and he puts in us the ability to persevere adding to our faith perseverance like we are going to make it no matter what happens no matter what battle no matter what challenge no matter what seems like to be insurmountable nothing is when we have god on our side He's given us his divine nature, and we're going to persevere. We're going to press on even when we feel like giving up. Don't ever be the one to quit before you're almost at that finish line. Let's go all the way with him and add to our faith perseverance. Add to that godliness. What is godliness? Really, it says to me a life that flows from a passion for God. We already talked about adding to our faith goodness, moral character. We add to that self-control. We add to that perseverance. We're adding knowledge. All these things we're going after and we're saying, I want to grow. I'm not going to sit here and just let things pass me by. I'm going to go after them. I'm going to add these ingredients into my life. And I want to have godliness in my life, which is simply saying, I want to have a passion for him, to know him, and to love him. It's worship. Worship expresses and refreshes our love for Christ. How is your love for Christ when you think about what's in your heart? Do you feel a stirring of, man, he means so much to me? Or do you reach a point at times in the journey where it's like, I don't think about him that much? We're here today because we are thinking about him. We're thinking about him sincerely and passionately. We've come today to say, this matters to me. I want him in my life. And when we have a growing passion for Jesus and who he is and what he means, that's godliness. That's saying he means more to me than anything else in the world. That should be what we seek 
to have going on in our heart, in our mind. God needs to mean more to me than anything else in the entire world. For if he does, he will add everything else to me. He said it this way, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, his rightness, and everything else will be added to you. It's so hard for us to get that. We want to go after other things that we think are really vital and important, but we need to always have him first and have our passion for Jesus be so alive in our hearts that that's what we're trying to stir up. We've got to go after it. Go after godliness. Go after that hunger for his presence. Add to that brotherly kindness, a generous spirit toward other believers. Brotherly kindness, that's saying we care about the people around us and we're going to be kind to them. Brotherly kindness is about family. We have a family love for the people in our family. It's not easy in relationship. We will annoy one another from time to time. We can offend one another from time to time. Typically, when we do that, it's not on purpose. There may be some moments where it might be more conscious, but most of the time, it's that life gets in the way and we don't respond to the way that we would like in certain moments and we get conflicts going on. What do we need to do? We need to pursue brotherly kindness, add to our faith. You know what? For, as for me, I'm going to do my best to be nice to people. I'm going to do my best to be kind because this is what God is like. I want his divine nature in my life. I want to be known as a kind-hearted soul. I don't want to be rude. I don't want to be known as someone who doesn't care. No, I want to be a person who is seen as a kind soul that people would benefit from being around because I'll treat that person well. That's something we want to add into our life. And then last, add to our faith, love. All these things seem to have love behind them, but there's still a love that we need to seek. And it seems that since he's just mentioned brotherly kindness, the love he's talking about here is beyond our family. People out side of faith that we want to love. We need a compassion for people in the world. People in the world meaning that don't have faith. They're outside of our community of believers. We need a love for them that God gives us. It's very significant that Peter calls us to grow in love for each other and in love for the world. Sometimes Christians that are most passionate about reaching lost people can get real critical about their relationship with other believers. We need to be careful that we are kind to one another and loving to people that are out there in the world. Where can we demonstrate God's compassion for lost people? We've got opportunities all over. I was blessed just to see that picture on the screen from the end of the game the other night because it causes me to reflect on how that was a love moment that was really a secular moment in a sense where there's a public school. I don't know where those kids are coming from and where their faith element might be or might not be. But we came to the end of that game and the coaches from the other team brought their players to the midfield and they wanted us to mingle. Not every team we play does that. But here they wanted to have that coming together moment and then asked if I would just speak to the players for a moment and then pray over them. Like, if, I, it surprised me. I didn't know that was coming. And here this moment is on us. And there's something inside of us we need to be walking in. And it's a spirit of love. I felt it in my soul looking at all these kids that we had just lost to. Typically, when you lose to somebody, you'd rather just get on the bus and get down the road. I don't care about you people. You just beat us. But no, there was a feeling it wasn't about the win or loss of the game. Life is so much bigger and broader than that. And I felt it stirring up inside of me. It was a wonderful feeling actually to look over those kids and to feel love for them that I didn't manufacture. It's what God gives us. He gives us his divine nature. The Holy Spirit is within us. And he gives us the ability to love. 
And so to pray a prayer in that moment over them and ask God's blessing and his favor, who knows what God does with that? Because he is the one who is spirit and puts his presence in other people and what that might say in their minds as they go forward from here. We have divine moments and you have them. We all have them. To have love in our hearts for people who don't believe the way we do, that we're prayerful that they will. It's in our heart to continue to influence other people toward faith. And before we pray to end our time together here today, I want to encourage you with this thought about where we're going. Growth is such an important part of our vision. We're constantly working on how to improve, how we can help each other grow. Discipleship is a Christian word that simply talks about how we can become more of a follower, a disciple, a follower of Jesus. How do we gain ground on that? We're always wanting to figure that out more. And it's an ever-moving target. And we have people that are new to faith as of today and some that are like me that have been in it their entire lifetime and then everything in between. So how do we take such a broad experience level and bring us all down the path together to grow? It's a mystery that God is good at. So he takes what we do here and he applies it to you and it becomes very personal and you can find your process of growth. But here's some steps that we are unfolding. In the new year, Base Camp has been a part of what we do. Anyone coming new into our church, we mentioned that in our video today that it starts in October, four weeks just to get familiar with our church and what we're about. It's a good entry point for anyone. If you haven't been through Base Camp, it's good for all. The next step is a new program that we are learning about and we're ready to launch it sometime in the new year called Rooted. There are churches that have adopted this system of study. It's 10 weeks in small groups where it's getting rooted into faith in the most critical areas of understanding our faith and what it means to us in a personal way. We're going to have everyone in our church, literally, our hope or our goal and prayer is that everyone, our staff, all of you, everyone included, next year will go through Rooted so that we are all on the same page of what our faith means to us and where we're at in our growth process. Then we have our small groups. It's also part of what we're already involved in, but we're amping up our intentionality for what we learn in our small groups and some very intentional studies. We'll be having that this fall, again in the spring. These are steps for all of us to grow by. We wanna provide a vehicle for everyone to find a pathway to the next step in the spiritual journey. And with that, there's an assessment tool that we'll make available that you can actually take a, a quick personal test and it will help reveal to you where do you need to grow the most? When I take it, it would say to me, here's where I have some deficiencies according to how I answered these questions and what I could study and what I could get a hold of. So it become a very personalized growth process because we're all at different stages in the journey. So we're going to have a very intentional approach from base camp to rooted to our small group studies to the assessment tools. We'll have reading recommendations for what we can do to grow in our knowledge base and how that applies then into our soul and spirit for our personal growth. It's so important to us. It's our vision that we gather and that we grow. And next week, we'll talk about what we do with all this when we go and let people know around us who Jesus is. Father God, we trust you today in our journey for your help in applying your word to our lives. Second Peter 1. Such great insights from a flawed man who yet in his flaws grew so much that he had lessons to pass on to us. Help us to lay hold of these truths so we can grow too. We want to become all that you want us to be. We ask, Lord, for your help in this moment to apply your word so that we'll go from where we are to even greater depths and greater heights and to a stronger place in our spiritual journey. Lead us to those places you want us to be. Before we finish our prayer today, 
It could be that you need to start with faith. Maybe that's where you're at, is taking that first step of having something that you can add to. We need to have faith first before we can add anything to it. So maybe you're there saying, I need my sins forgiven. I'm going to be a believer. I'm coming into faith and asking for him to forgive me of my sins. He is always faithful, and he will forgive us the moment we ask him for it. If that's something that you need today, would you just lift up your hand and say, you know, I do, and I want that. I'm going to ask him for his grace in my life. God bless you for that all around this room. That's awesome. Why don't we stand together? We're near the end, but we're not at the end of this moment. This is still a moment to embrace. Let's move into that place of godliness and our love for Jesus before we leave the room and worship him. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. And let that be our personal prayer. Invite him into your soul and spirit and say with that, I want you to be my first passion. I want to walk after you. I want to know you all the more. And while we worship here for a moment, if some of our prayer partners would come again, if you raise your hand, you know it's also good to step out, take one more step today and find a person to pray with. They'll be here around the front and that prayer can make a really impact in your life today from the place of saying, that's what I want, then make it happen as we pray to God for his grace to cover us. Feel free to come and find one of our prayer partners today. But let's all of us express our passion for the Lord today in this worship song.